everybody, it's Imogen, welcome back to Colouring Kit. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made these swatch cards. Um, I recently came across a video by Blayak Fine Art and she showed how to make these and I thought they were a really really good idea because I was needing to update my swatches anyway. I'm going to show you my swatch book now and I actually was very organised with it and um, did all my swatches. But as you can see, they're not very big. So every time I was looking for a specific colour to match another colour, um, I would usually have to pick the colours and then um, swatch them on a piece of paper to check that they were the right ones. And it just wasn't very conducive. Um, it didn't really work the best. So I'm obviously still going to use my swatch book because it's really, really handy to just have everything. But these are amazing. So... I went into the description of her video and she um, put there that she um, was giving away the template for free. Now I had to just put my email in and subscribe um, but it didn't work. Because it was from a while ago I think the document might have been outdated. Um, so anyway I redid this. I made this myself on a Microsoft publisher and I put it into a Word document and uh, done it as a PDF file so you can get that for free um, if you just click the link in the description and hopefully it should work and this is what you will get um, I can actually pull it out so you get four of these um, charts on one A4 piece of paper so for a full 150 set you need four and a half of these sheets so you need 18 um, or 19 depending because this isn't quite the full set um, of Prismacolors anyway so um, yeah about 18, 19 depending how many you have so um, basically I thought this was really 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 good because all of these circles firstly have a gradient so you kind of go from light to dark anyway and there's kind of a light bit so you can see what it would look like with one layer and then also, you can put it up right up to another colour. Um, say you're, I'll show you here, I recently got this book, Thomas Kincaid book, saying you're trying to um, trying to find the colour for this blue. Um, I can go to my blue section here and then kind of put the colours up against it and see which one would be the best. And it's so much easier. Um, so I just think it's a fabulous idea. So I've done all my Prismacolor ones now and I've actually got 144 of the Prismacolors. I don't have all of them. I'm close though um, because I got the 132 set and then bought some of the extras. And now I've started my Holbeins. So I've done four of them so far and I've coloured another one and I'm going to show you how I did it. So the things you'll need for this is obviously the template. You can make it yourself if you want but as I said the free PDF file will be linked down below. So I have printed this onto some thick cards. Now originally I bought this card and it is very very smooth and I didn't think it was going to be very good for pencil but it's perfect for this because it's thick, it w it's very durable, it will last a long time, it's really really nice um, and you know I got 50 sheets of it so I need to use it somehow so um, I've already used quite a lot of it but this is a really good way of using it for um, something useful. So apart from the card you'll obviously need the template printed onto the card, your pencils um, I'm doing eight colours from the Holbeins, which are the greens. And then you'll also need, obviously, a pen to write all of your um, colours and codes on. Some scissors or a paper cutting knife to then cut it out. Um, what I recommend is, and I'll show you how I cut it, I cut round it and then use a paper cutting knife to do the inner um bits because it's very fiddly to do with um, scissors and don't worry I have used these for a long time and I am um, I am being safe when I use this so um, you never want to um, cut towards your finger you always want to cut away and these are quite um, dangerous if you haven't really used them before but I do paper cutting and loads of stuff like that so I've used them a lot and you'll need a hole puncher and uh, a paper fastener. So these are one of um, a 
uh, these clever tools that are just amazing and if you haven't seen one before you just put it through the hole and then you pull it out like that so that all of your pieces stay in like that and then they all just come out like this which is amazing so I'm probably going to do some of this on a time lapse otherwise it will take ages and I kind of just want this to be short and snappy um, but it's really really simple to do these so to do my sphere what I usually do and I will just figure out which is the next colour that I need to do um, so I think I'm doing Viridian next yep so what I do with these purely because it's just the easiest thing for me is I do a light layer over the middle of the sphere then I do really 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 hard pressure at the bottom here and this is the hardest pressure that you can get and then I do hard pressure all the way around the circle and then I feather it out lightly and still do hard pressure up here so you do kind of do hard pressure up to the middle and then you feather out and get lighter and lighter and lighter until this top area and you want this to be still fairly light obviously so that you can see what it would look like with only one layer so that's what it looks like it looks a bit drowned out on the um, camera because of the light but I can assure you that is definitely more of a viridian colour than a light green as it's showing up on there so what I'm going to do is just carry on colouring these and I'm going to do it on a time lapse for you so you can see me just do all eight of them Okay, so now that's all done, I'm going to go and go ahead and write all of the uh, colour names and uh, codes. So what I do is write the colour name first and then the code. That's just um, how I'm, I'm going to do it. I find it easier. If you just want to do the colour name or just want to do the code, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, I know some people find it easier to go by codes or colours depending how well they know their pencils. So I'm again going to do that on a time lapse. Otherwise. Um, you know, I'll just make the video um, longer and I'm just writing stuff. Okay, so now you've finished all the colouring and the um, writing, the thing to do now is to obviously cut them out so as I said you can either use scissors or a cutting knife something like that um, I wouldn't recommend using a cutting knife for the whole thing just because it does hurt your hands and scissors are a lot better to use um, I do find it a lot quicker to uh, pick out the tiny bits um, with a cutting knife just because it is really really hard with the scissors um, but anyway I'm going to show you with one of them and then obviously um, time lapse the others I'm kind of experimenting a bit more with um, editing as well so I do want to you know try and show you my full process but uh, sped up in some parts so with the first circle I go around all of it so this is all cut and then what I do is ignore that little triangle bit and just cut along I do it all straight 
and then I curve round So that's the whole of the main bit finished and you can use this card for something else if you want to. Um, but now what I do is I do use scissors for part of it and with all of these uh, triangular type bits I cut up on the left bit, so all of the left bits. Because I'm right handed um, I can do this bit really easily. And if you're left handed, you might want to cut the right bits. Another thing which um, the lady from Blayac Fine Art did was she put sellotape on them so that they lasted longer. So if you wanted to put sticky back plastic or sellotape on them, you could absolutely do that. I need to get some sticky back plastic anyway and I was thinking of doing it so maybe that will be something that I do so once you've done that I then go in with the fatty knife and do the other bit because it's just so much easier so you do have to use quite a lot of pressure so it does hurt your hands even after just doing one so you may want to take breaks from doing these So now, obviously it's all cut out, and so I just trim off any tiny, tiny bits that are kind of poking out. So they're not going to be perfect circles, I mean, none of them are perfect, but it's good enough. So now what I do is hole punch it, so I hole punch it as far in as I can and try to make it as close to the middle as I can. Obviously it's not going to be absolutely perfect either. Um, and then you can attach it to your um, ones already made. So I'm going to put a new one in. So these are paper fasteners. I got mine from WH Smith. And I really, really love these. I got them for an art project in year eight, and they have come in handy a lot of times since then. So, yeah, just attach it to the back, poke it through, turn to the other side, and push it out. And this is just excellent because you can just get to any colour you need to. So depending whether this will be long enough, I'm going to try and put all my pencils on one. But if it doesn't all fit, then I'll split them off into the different um, sets. So I'm now going to time lapse me doing the other one. And then it will be almost finished. So I've added my green and blue now to my um, whole stack of sheets. So obviously apart from these being a great um, swatching uh, idea instead of a swatch book, they're great for travel as well. So you could just put this into your bag, you don't have to worry about a whole book that's going to be quite heavy. Um, you could just probably put it inside a, a pencil case and just put it there but I just think it is a really really original idea and obviously this wasn't my idea it was the lady from Blayac Fine Art so um, I can't take credit for this um, but please go over to her video and watch it I will definitely link it down below so I just think that it is so helpful because I know that um, when I'm looking at reference photos it is sometimes hard to 
get a completely accurate colour so you can just use this and put the colour up against it so um, again with the, the Thomas Kincaid book I was um, looking at some of these colours here and trying to match them so obviously with her cape here and I was doing it with the Prisma colours you can just kind of take one out and say okay pomegranate I think that's quite close to it um, you can even obviously mix the sets as well so that's why it's quite good to do more than one set and I was quite wary buying this book I mean it's gorgeous um, but sometimes because it's obviously oil paint to um, image it's hard to exactly match the colours so that's why it's really really good to have a tool like this and I just saw it and I thought it would be amazing to do so I spent all yesterday doing the Prismacolor one and surprisingly it didn't take that long um, as I said I did need to do 18 of these so you can imagine it, it took quite a few hours but not too long um, but I also recently got this colour combinations book which I will also try and link below if I can find it I got it from Amazon UK and this has loads and loads of colour combinations so I've done a video showing um, books I use as references but I don't actually have a specific colour combination book um, there's a really good website called Design Seeds which has loads and loads of them but sometimes I find they're quite um, repetitive and some of them are just uh, one colour but different shades of it so you know all blues and I kind of wanted something a bit different so um, my mum and dad got this for me uh, as a half term treat and it is so amazing it comes with different sections so it explains how to use the structure of the page and as I said it comes with different categories my personal favorite is this first one and for each color it gives you a description of the color and what each one kind of means and then you get all of the different colors here and then you get them again down here in spheres and you get the colour name and the description and then over here all of the colours are combined into different um, numbers um, of combinations so this is two, three, four and five colours in a combination so I think sometimes what it's hard for us colourists to do is to visually see how different colours would look on a page so if you are using a limited colour palette and you're not quite sure um, which colour would look good in specific places you can kind of look at it like this because obviously with um, some of these colour combinations um, one specific colour is kind of more prominent so especially with this one here there's a lot more yellow than blue and you can see how that would look um, whereas here there's quite a lot of blue compared to yellow so it's just a really really good way of um, being able to visualise the different colour palettes and also here again it's fantastic because if I'm looking for this green I can just put uh, my swatches right up next to it don't have to worry about any faffing with your pencils once you pick the colours you can then go straight to your case and pick your colour out whereas you know it can take ages sometimes picking out colours and yeah the other thing that I think is really good about this is if you want to come up with your own colour palette you can kind of see which colours would go really well together so if you know that you want um, say you want this deco peach colour and then you know that you want a sort of bluey colour but you're not sure which one you can put the colours right up next to each other and see what they look like so you can create your own colour palettes from this as well so I really hope you've enjoyed this video as I said um, I will be linking everything down below that you will need if you want to follow along this uh, with this tutorial. I'm just trying to put this back on. There we go. Um, I will try and link this book. As I said, it has so many colour palettes. It's amazing. I will probably go more in depth with it. I think at some point I'm going to do a haul video. I, um, I've got one or two more things to come I think one of them being um, the Forest Girl book which is uh, for my Kofi uh, money uh, and then I'll probably do a haul so I'll go more in depth about that when I do do that but yeah I really hope you've enjoyed this video 
I think this is such a great idea. I've still got a lot to do, but um, hopefully they'll be done soon. And then it's so much easier for references and stuff. So thank you so much, um, Blair Act Fine Art, for the idea. And thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Everything will be linked down below. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.